name is Switenia Puspa Lestari. You can call me Tenia. I'm the founder and executive director of Diverse Clean Action. I fell in love with sea. I think it's, it was all started since I was a, a child because in 2003, at that time I was in uh, third grade of elementary school. Uh, my dad worked in the National Park of Thousand Island, which is in Indonesia is Kepulauan Seribu. It's only uh, two hours from North Jakarta. It's uh, the area that we have lots of islands. And then because my dad worked there, uh, he brought me to the islands to experience the island's life. And at that time, I used to be afraid of oceans, of sea, because uh, at that time, uh, I think, uh, I thought that uh, ocean is scary because of the, you know, Jaws movie and sharks and etc. But then my dad brought me uh, and taught me to dive. And at that time, I fell in love instantly because the beautiful uh, aspect. Uh, we built this diverse clan action as a community at first, just because when we diving, we collect trash and then we, we confuse on where to put it. Then we think that cleaning up will, will not be an ultimate solution because every time we clean up, the trash will be there again the next day. Therefore, uh, after a careful consideration and also asking my uh, professors and also other communities and fellows, we built our own community that tries to uh, become the platform for fellow divers that love the oceans. At first, it's only me, uh, and then I get the support from two co-founders. And then uh, three of us successfully um, gather more than 100 divers and also ocean enthusiasts to do cleanups together. And after that, because there's a lot of uh, news coverage uh, through national television or um, you know, uh, newspaper or social media, then uh, it grew. And now uh, we do already have volunteers registered in Divers Clean Action up to 1,500 persons. And they are not only located in Jakarta, but not only in Indonesia as well, but also in the region of Southeast Asia. There's a unique study about rejections that my team, uh, you know, we usually go to uh, each islands and we try to live there for like two months or more than that. And then we do collect the trash, we do sampling, we surface, and then we do educating uh, from door to door. And at that time, there's like this uh, local champion that actually uh, yelling at us because they just don't like us and they, are, they don't understand what we're doing. They thought that we're just like university students because most of us are young. Uh, they thought that it is not, um, we are not trying to accommodate their needs, uh, but we only seeking for data and etc. Et uh, but because of our wonderful team uh, works uh, and their uh, support, uh, the community understand more and more each day we live there. The, the most unique uh, marine debris that we found under the water is actually um, a lot. We find not only, of course, single-use plastics, but also, uh, you know, bats and then also televisions, the door of cars, and even um, <laughs> electric fan and etc. Uh, that shows us that there's a lot of huge chunks of waste that is being directly dumped to the oceans, whether from the river or from the community that live in the area. The Diverse Clean Action Foundation now have four main programs. The first one is we do data collections where we try to utilize citizen science uh, programs such as uh, you know uh, making volunteers to do the uh, data collection whether it's collecting data from beach area, underwater area and, and also the municipal area. So we can know what's the projection of the waste in that area, what type are there and etc. And then after we do the first study, we do uh, campaign and workshops, where in campaign and workshop programs, we try to make sure these data can make, uh, can, you know, can, can, can be meaning something. 
and also can be appropriated, uh, translated into what they can do. And then the third program is we do community development programs where we really, uh, you know, uh, develop one area for six months until three years because we want to see the differences that we made uh, before our program and until our program, whether the waste is reduced, whether the waste is recycled, and also not going to the ocean. Uh, and then the last one program is collaborating with private sectors uh, through EPR or CSR program. Then we work together to make a collaborative uh, campaign, which is No Straw Movement campaign, where we try to empower uh, restaurants all over Indonesia that they can actually make differences start from the source by reducing and, uh, and especially not providing any single-use plastic which is actually hard to recycle in Indonesia. And after that movement, uh, we successfully reduced more than 91% single-use plastic straw from that restaurant and then other big restaurants in Indonesia is following the movement. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that you can do, uh, especially uh, starting from individually from home. We can start to refusing and also reducing the amount of waste that we collect or we provide or we, we project <laughs> every day. And then uh, after we try to refuse the re and reduce, we can start to reuse and also recycle. Uh, by making sure that we separate our waste. Uh, the most simple thing is to differentiate between the uh, organic one or the waste from your kitchens, perhaps, or after your food is not um, uh, finished yet. And then um, the recyclables, which is the one that actually can be sold or be recycled, and then to residuals which is uh, uh, the things that cannot be recycled at all. Other than that, uh, you can also start to uh, volunteer and also to educate yourself. Because talking about you know, World Oceans Day, that ocean, even though it's so far away from our house, it's actually really, really connected to our daily life.